All right, you guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to go ahead and take this engine out. And if I, if you notice, there was a short a while back. I showed that the valves were sticking out on the exhaust valves, and uh, mostly on one and two, but uh, a little bit on number three. Not too bad, but what it's telling me is the valves have dropped into the it dropped into the seats. And probably they were worn quite a bit, and then they, it were kind of thin, and then the edges of the valve kind of cupped a little bit. So they need to be replaced. And we're going to go ahead and do a valve job on this, tear it down. Just do the heads, do a valve job. I'm not going to do a complete engine rebuild. Probably should. I mean, if it was a shop, it would be a good idea to just sell them a whole rebuild. Back in the old days, we wouldn't have done a valve job without doing the whole rebuild because you got to warranty it, right? So anyway, let's go ahead and take this out and we'll take a look at see the process and show you guys how to do it. Talk to you later. Right, so the engine's out. I just got to strip it down. Uh, so I'll get my screwdriver out and start taking it all apart. Get it down to the heads. Pull the heads off. It doesn't really take that long. But anyway, we'll have at it. All right, sorry for skipping ahead, guys, but I was just kind of being real careful taking these off because you got the lifters. I want to make sure they stay in order. And, you know, on these 36s, the lifters are on the end of the push rod. So here's what we're looking at, if you guys can see. You see how these valves are dropped in the seats quite a bit? And this one, of course, looks like something went through there, didn't it? Something went through that engine. Well, that was probably in the last rebuild, or you know, might have been there for a while. But see how those valves are just the exhaust valves are just pounded into the seats. And I think what happens is they start to cup, they get thin around the edges because they're hot, you know, because of the age, the type of fuel we have, and all that stuff. Maybe they were running regular gas in it maybe before i got it they were running it too lean i don't know you know and uh i don't have a issue with that you can tell they're not running lean at all 
<laughs> with the tops of those pistons, I mean, sucker's got enough carbon on it to, yeah. So there's something how black that is in here. See, I'm not running lean at all, so I know that spark plugs are. Let me look here. If I can get you guys one, like this. That's just from that's dust. I had on the top there. There's a little bit of dust on there, but yeah, you can see how they're kind of blackish down in there. It's not from running lean. That's for sure. So I just, uh, this is something that happens when I guess on these 36s, I, you know, there's tons of these valves out there. So they, they had a problem with these getting, I wish they had stainless ones for these. That sure would solve a lot of the problems, wouldn't it? Today's fuel and everything. Anyway, we'll get the rest of this here, uh, tore down and take a look at the other side. Uh, you want to be real careful. Don't want to pull any case studs, you know, all that stuff. I really don't want to have to do a full engine on this thing. These are kind of expensive and they're kind of a pain. They're just everything on them. That's why I got it on the stand. I was trying to put it on the ground so I didn't film it all. Stopped because I realized that I got to get up on the stand because these, that's, these heater boxes, I forgot how much of a wonderful part of the job they are. So anyway. Got it up on the stand to do that. And I guess I'm going to put it together up here. I mean, the other ones, like, it was a 1600 or something. I would just do it on the ground. If I don't have any issues doing those. That's for sure. Those are easy. Forgot how hard these are. I I just don't take these apart very often. I didn't before. I mean, we used to just take them out of the car and put it up in the attic. We had, I think, 1.35, 36. Maybe George will tell us. I forget how many engines. I remember I was in the 30s somewhere of these 36 horsepower engines, and I was needed an engine for my 57 that I was putting together. And he goes, "Well, just go get one out of the attic." <laughs> I go, "Oh, yeah, that's right. Forgot about those 36 horse." I was like, "Yeah, I don't really want to put that in, but it's all I had, so I put that in the car, and that's what it had in it till I got rid of it about a year later." Let's take the side off and take a look. I'm going to unloosen everything. Got everything soaked in here. Unloosen it all. And then we'll pull it off and take a look at it and see. Put the other one. Throw the other one in the parts washer for now. And bring it back in. So right, this is three and four. So you can see number three's dropped in the seat quite a bit. The intake valve is riding kind of high, it seems like to me, but I don't know, it's still a VW valve. Look, you can see the emblem in it. This one's Volkswagen. And this one's riding normal in the seat, like kind of would probably be okay, but I'm going to replace all of them. And I figure if one's bad, they're probably all right next to it. Might as well put them all in. Replace all the valves, do a valve job on these. Looks like it's been a while. Looks like, and it looks like this thing hasn't been apart for a long time, but I mean, it, it, it might be able to use a rebuild. It didn't use any oil. It seemed to run pretty good. You can see how dirty it was in here. That's been a while since it's been apart. Like I said, it wouldn't even hurt to do a full rebuild on it, but uh, I don't see any real need to. Let me check the end play again. I, I've never done it, like an end play adjustment or anything to this, so this is the way it was when I got it. And it's probably feels like to me between three and six somewhere. 
it feels really pretty normal. It doesn't feel super loose. I think it's around five ish. I'm going to guess. I, I just know by feel some people go, Oh, you can't know. That's bullshit. You can, <laughs> if you've been doing it, if you've had enough cars, you get to know what it feels like, you know? So anyway, I'd say just do the heads. I, I don't, I don't see anything else that needs to be done. This is number three, guys. I should would focus. You might have to move this head. It might help. I don't know. It's not wanting to focus today. <laughs> anyway. So anyway, um, there's some numbers on here. What's that say? Got it. Uh, the lens was dirty. Is that a big bore kit? I don't know. Plus, because these look awful thin. And this sucker had some power. So I wonder. I'll clean off that off and look at it real quick. Let's see what it says. All right, so if you look at these uh, 36 horsepower heads, I got them all sandblasted. Saw some of that, maybe. But if you look here in the exhaust ports, I mean, these things are, the seats are pretty worn, so definitely by the time I grind those, they'll be quite a bit further down, but that's okay. If you look, if you look here, and you can get your, bigger finger in there on the on the 40 horse and the 30 and on the single port heads you can't even get your finger in there at all so these ones here I, I don't think there's really much you could do to port them maybe the intake side a little bit I might do just a little bit in in here I'm looking at that a little bit of a corner going on there I could probably take just a little bit of that Intake seat away, not the seat, but the actual aluminum behind it, just to kind of get it to flow a little bit more. But I really don't think it'll really make any difference. There's not enough there to really make a lot of difference. I don't think so. The if you look at the chambers, are really open. The uh, pistons were seventy-seven point nine four. 70, 76.94 so original so that's what they were so the stamping said I cleaned them up so yeah anyway these are all ready we're going to take them down to the guy we're going to go show you guys how they got to grind some valves we're not going to like the perfection on these we just want to get it to run keep it running keep it from blowing up and you know we're not doing a whole new engine like that so probably just gonna we're probably gonna put new guides in exhaust guides had a little you know pretty good size movement in there and uh figure we'll do new guides we have new valves in the exhaust grind the intakes grind the seats that should do it i'll let george look at it and he'll decide a little bit you know i mean he, he'll listen to me <laughs> I'll, I'll listen to him and then he, uh, he may convince me to do something different, so we will see later.
And here we are with George at the shop. This is George's shop. This is a work in progress. He's been working on this place. Uh, got a really good deal on this building, and so he decided to go steal. He really wanted to do something different. He's working on this uh, convertible right now for somebody. Yeah, they're doing like a pink pearl. He's got the pan over here waiting on some stuff from MP right now on the disc brakes. So we'll get into that another time. But yeah, he's got this thing going on. Powder coated pan, convertible, got all those tools set up. Uh, little George uh, used to have a shop in Riverside and that's where I used to work years ago. Let me shut this so we can get some of light in your eyes. Okay, so we got the 36 horse heads over here. And George was going to do the valves for us. And uh, we got new valves. It took me a little while to get all this stuff. Got new valves. Um, so on these, I kind of cleaned up the intake ports a little. Just there's an edge underneath here just to kind of give it a little more flow. Anything you can do to that side of the engine is going to help a little bit. Um, and we got the new valves versus the old. So then if you got here the new valve, it's a little less tapered than the old. So it might flow a little bit better on the exhaust side. I don't know how much that's going to do. It might do something. Got all our new guides here. Eddie and Dave's Garage or uh, Wolfsburg West. If you guys are in Orange County, you always use Eddie and Dave's Garage. You can just call them. And anything you need from Wolfsburg West, he goes there like two or three times a week and save you a trip. Uh, you can always use him. So we're going to be grinding the seats, the valves here. Um, we'll show you a little bit of clips on this stuff and uh, show you how it, kind of a little bit how it's done. So typically on your like regular late models, let me shut this door again because it's kind of getting lighting messed up here. Um, we'll use this tool right here. It goes on the air hammer. If you can see that end, and then you from the inside. We hammer out, we're doing the exhaust valves, the exhaust sides. We'll hammer them out, like on your 1600 heads. We'll use this tool, but on this old 36 horse, I mean, the guides are really thin on the inside. So when you use this tool, it kind of mushrooms the inside of it, and then it will mess up the guide boss, and we don't want to do that. So a little trick you can do is you can just take a, on a 36 horse, on a 40 horse, it's going to be different size, obviously. They're bigger valves, like 8 millimeter. these are 7s. So we're going to go ahead and thread this with a tap. So we've been using the tap. I haven't done this head yet. We're using the tap to thread this here on these. And then, we'll, then what happens is when you use a punch, you put a bolt in there, and then you use a punch to hit the bolt versus... Uh, you know, mushrooming up the other side. So, you know, you don't want to mushroom that up because when that mushrooms up, it'll kind of mess up your guide boss. So a little trick is to just put a bolt in there and knock them out and then use this tool to put them in. Uh, we're actually going to heat the heads up. Uh, well, if we're going to do it, I don't know how we're going to do it yet. May end up heating up the heads on, on there. Well, normally we would do that, but uh, we run into, I don't think these guides, I don't think on the 36 horse they make the plus two, three, four, you know, sizes. Um, they only, that, as far as I know, they only make one that I could find. I have to look at the website again. Go ahead. You can see they had the uh, guides in there. And it fit, it fit pretty tight, right, George? Yeah, you can hear the ringing of the head when it gets down. It'll change the pitch. Oh, the yeah, head. that changed. Then you know it's all the way in, right? Yep, you know you're home. But uh, but it, it did fit tight enough. So we were kind of thinking that it might not be. That's where we're normally we'll heat the heads up. And then you can freeze the guides and stick them in a lot easier. Some guys do that. It all depends on how you want to do it. This out, too. This is our old engine stand from... God, how many engines I saw get built on this stand? This thing's just so beefy. Check that out. And he made a jig to do front ends on it. So that's kind of cool, huh? I thought you guys might kind of like that. 
just so you can put the front end on a regular engine stand. Just made a little jig for it. And then uh, they built the whole front end out for that car. So it's the kind of things George used to do. You know, I think these guys were fine, really. Look at yeah. that. <laughs> Look at that thing. It is like totally wallowed out the top of that. Just gone. Is there any threads? I mean, it's like that thing's so wallowed out. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> that thing's like... Flying. No, yeah, it's like plenty big enough for that tap. Okay. My gosh. <laughs> yeah, there's some threads catching. Oh my gosh, that is crazy. Slightly worn. It's <laughs> almost one for the record books there. Yeah, I think, I'm surprised this thing was even running. It still ran great. I drove it all the way to San Diego like that. It was fine. Just started missing when I got home and then I was like, eh, I think I got a tight valve and just a little bit of a miss, only when you first started it, then it went away. So I think the valves got tight. I thought I have adjusted these ones, but I don't, maybe not. I don't remember. Oh. <laughs> Whoa! I thought that might happen. Let's see if we break another one. Oh, broke another one. Those are pretty crystallized. Oh, is it going to break? <laughs> or just losing everything off the bench. It's moving. Nope. Let me you broke me another one. My, uh... There you go. Not so lucky today. Okay. Yeah, the punch is on the other side of the shop, so he's going to go get that, the longer punch. So that's why we just tried to use the valves. Sometimes it works, sometimes not. The other head, it was a little bit, tiny bit looser. This one's a little bit tighter, but uh, they're probably still fine either one. Anyway, we'll bring you back in when we get to the grinding part. Well, let's see how this one is. The other ones were pretty good. Oh, this one's got a little warpage, huh? Oh, there's two of them that didn't have any warpage, and then this one. Yeah, it's only 2000s. 2000s is not a one. I wonder, I bet these were on the, the ones that, these were on the bad head. Probably. I bet. The one and two. Could be number three, too. Now I gotta dry the skin, stems down so that the length is similar, you know, it would be exactly perfect, but we all lose. Then we'll chamfer it after that. So anyway, let's talk a little bit about what we did yesterday. Um, so you've noticed the valves are a little bit low in here. Uh, so what we did is a three angle cut on everything. And this is where the valves ended up. And then we had to even out the stems so that they come out pretty close. They're not going to be exactly the same. Some are a little higher than others, but that's normal. Um, but you want them to be pretty close because you want the rocker angles to be about the same so that, you know, they're not wearing, pushing the valve sideways. So we did that and uh, got them seats. It took a long time to grind the seats. That's why I didn't get the video at all. Because uh, it literally was taking a long time to, because we had to do, you know, we were doing them really nice where we wanted the center to be the same on the 45, so that the same width. Some guys would just grind them, you know, whenever do the three angles, but we went, you know, we did one angle, the other angle, then do the 45, then come back and 
make sure they're all the same so it's a little more than just more involved than just you know just cutting them real quick so anyway but the uh, they turn out pretty good inside and you know I'm real happy with it it's just these heads were probably these somebody probably wouldn't have done these because they would have just said nah you know whatever the, the work it would have taken to do them would have been too much for what they normally charge so that's makes sense but we got them to work so because since how many of these you're going to find you know I'm trying to find another set of heads and then maybe you'll get good ones maybe get bad ones so anyway we'll just run with these put them on and uh, talk to you guys a little later So anybody wonder why you have these on a 36 horse and on 40 horses? Maybe you don't know. It's because they had stale air heater boxes and this was like a just in case it leaks past here or your heads come loose to uh, keep carbon monoxide from going in the car. That's my theory at least because uh, they only came on 40s and 36s when they use those heater boxes. You can always comment on that. Well, the things I don't really remember about working on these, because like I said, we did not rebuild very many of them, most of them. They got pulled, and then you'd tell them, hey, well, how much to rebuild this? And it's like, well, probably going to cost you more than if we just go with a bigger engine. So usually they just they'd be like, really? I'd rather have a bigger one. That's typical. When they're driving every day. So, is this valve right here, putting that spring on, because the perch right here the, for, the cam, for the followers or whatever, cam followers, I guess, that's what they are now, they're cam, what is the damn thing? Or the lifter rack, whatever, I don't know, can't, doesn't come to me right now. So anyway, because of this tightness in here, and it was really fun to get that one on because we didn't have, you know, the 36 horsepower tools. You know, I, I don't know where that stuff went. I think we used to have it, but, you know, you know how much stuff got thrown away? You know how many, like, line board bars got basically given away back then when we were closing the, who was closing the shop? It was, it was like, where are you going to put it? You know, so, well, sell it for whatever you can get, you know. So a lot of stuff got taken and got lost like that we we literally had everything hit a mill everything at that shop but it was a three-phase powered mill and we're gonna do with that at your house you can't you know plus i don't know everything was kind of up in the air so it's just like had to just get rid of stuff and it was terrible but uh i, I don't really remember that much of that because i was kind of in, in and out myself and i was over helping but i don't remember so anyway that's what happened. So a lot of stuff got lost. We just had to do them without any special tools. So of course I didn't get to film the loveliness of trying to put these things in. Uh, it was fun. So anyway, uh, we got it. But, you know, it wasn't like conventional or you know, and all this stuff. Uh, all these thirty-six horsepower stuff is just too small for any of the regular tools. So anyway, we'll show you some other valve work. You know, on some other engines over at Georgia shop. So it's coming up shortly but uh again you know it was pressed for time so we couldn't do all that so anyway talk to you guys a bit later so we're making headway here haven't been filming the whole thing as i'm going but i'm just figured i'd do a couple of highlights so this i glue these on you know some people go oh you don't need to do that it'll stay in place because the bail whatever i mean maybe maybe not uh, but I've always done it this way. There's a lot of things I've always done the way I've done. I've always not put those in. Well, actually, not always. We used to put them in. We stopped, and I'll tell you why in a second. But anyway, so I glue these on here. The reason I've always done that is because I've seen several times the gasket walks its way up like that. And... 
all your oil leaks out while you're driving down the road and it's lovely every time a little expensive today for that to happen so we don't want that to happen then i put them on wiggle them around and make sure i got them all the way on and then pull the bale up put it on you need a tool here you go uh, uh, there we go so that's on all right moving ahead so let's have a little chit chat about these things here uh i thought this car had thermostats in it i remember it had a thermostat in it but it was missing the flaps and it sure did warm up quick i thought man this car's got thermostats it warms up a little quicker didn't really have thermostats so i was wrong there but uh, oh, oh, there's a reason why we stopped running thermostats in California. And you know, some guys think you still got to have them. And maybe they do in some places in the world. I and mean, we used to take these off. Okay. And I was talking to the old boss. And he says, um, we used to send them to, we used to sell them to a guy in Canada. He would buy boxes of them from us. Uh, we'd ship them up there or whatever. Because they were hard to find. Because out here, I mean, I want to say everybody, but a guy had to correct me in the last uh, comment that he was the one percent that this is not everybody. So not everybody, but hmm, good part of 95, 98 percent or better don't run them. In fact, some people don't even know what they are. This is a thermostat. And what it did, it went between the cylinders up in here. And this little rod would connect to, mm, I, it, forgive me if I get it wrong, guys, because I don't take these, I haven't had these apart in a long time. It would go on to, oh, a little actuator thing. Yeah, this rod here on the early car like this, 36 horse. Go on there, of course, they're different, different years, and then push up as the engine warmed up. Well, what happened is these bellows here were designed to, uh, as you warm this up, they would go out. And people are telling me that they could not fail closed. So, explain, comments. Why did, when we took one of these and put it in hot water, did some of them not open? Explain. Because that is what we saw happen. I have no idea why. Apparently, guys have said, this is, I'm just going by what other people said because, again, we're not thermostat people. We stopped running them a long time ago. Had no is engine wear issues from it. Uh, guys are saying that, uh, yeah, you did, but you just didn't know. Okay, whatever. 150,000 miles on, a, on an original engine. My friend runs one right now. No thermostat. He drives it all over Southern California, Arizona, and the freezing cold in Arizona sometimes. Whatever. He drives it all the time. It's his only vehicle. He doesn't have a thermostat. 150,000 miles. He got his engine rebuilt. And really, it was just to freshen it up. He did the whole thing, but it was still running good. wasn't using oil. Tell me it doesn't doesn't matter but anyway i'm not putting this feller back in there because i don't have the flaps anyway but that's not why i just don't really need it wasn't really doing much but the thing that i the, the worry that we had when we were had these in, in, in the cars is we had some that would not open it would look just like this you can heat it up with a torch. We'll do that. Dun, 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 da, 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 da. You can see this one works. Hello. We, we, we didn't even use a torch, but I'm using a torch. We would use warm boiling water or something like that. Put it on the stove on our little hot plate and uh, heat it up. And it would not open. So, how did that happen? I don't know. And especially how this thing's engineered. Uh, apparently you can poke a hole in it and if you poke a hole in it it'll open 
Um, I don't know. I'm not going to do that because it works. But and they're a little hard to find if somebody wanted one. But uh, yeah, you know, how would that happen? I, I explain that in the comments. I don't know. I just know that it happened. Good luck with that. And everybody tells me I'm just a liar and that didn't happen, but it did. So explain. Anyway, I was just reading some comments and kind of getting me a little irked there, but kind of sometimes it gets under your skin because, you know, when you see something happen and everybody tells you it didn't happen and you're going, okay, well, I saw a UFO, but it, you know, it wasn't real. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Whatever. Anyway, back to the engine build. We're going to get this, uh, or it's not an engine build. It's just, you know, we're doing a uh, freshen up. So yeah, you can see I've got here, I use that, um, I use this stuff here, the uh, 3M weather strip adhesive. And then what happens is it stays on there next time. If I want to, you know, if I take these off to adjust the valves, then usually it's glued on really good here. And I don't have to worry about that between the gasket and the valve cover. I just clean and dry this side and put it back on and usually they don't leak. Really handy. And the other one's on. Well, we're looking at cylinder 10, so i got to get this engine off the stand at some point, huh? Yikes. That's going to be fun. I got it up here by myself. I just put it over on the ground. I lift it up on a jack. You can see the jack's way up in the air. I put it up as high as I can, then I just kind of, I don't know, I, I kind of hold the wheels from, and I just kind of roll it up there. It's not easy. I dropped one once doing that, but... It works. Oh, yeah. By the way, you can't do that either. That's not, you know, possible. Okay. <laughs> it cracks me. I don't know. It just cracks me up. Some of the stuff I see just cracks me up. You know, hey, don't you don't need to take, you know, retorque the heads. Okay. All right. Don't have to. Always between on your valve. You know, that's why we take the valve train off and check it. That's why I found that these heads were in bad shape because... When I pulled off the valve train to retorque the heads, all I do is these four, these four bolts that are underneath here. I don't take the whole engine apart and do them all. It's, it, you don't really need, you know, you can do that if you want, but uh, we don't find that really necessary. We used to never do that, but God, I hate these cylinder 10 from 36 horses. Really tough to get on here. So anyway, but yeah, we've always done, we always did the four. We'd always pull the valve train off every time in the shop when somebody brought their car in. But at home, I tell you guys this stuff because, you know, you know your car. You've taken it apart before. And, you know, you can know if you tor retorqued them last time. So if you redo them about every other time, it's usually acceptable. So, well, that's on. Now i got to get... This little acorn piece on. Guy tried to sell me one of these at Pomona Swap Meet, and he goes, "Oh yeah, that's a that's the right one." I'm like, "No, it's not the right one." Oh no, no, it's the right one. I go, "No, it's not the right one." I don't know anything. I guess it wasn't the right one. And I don't know. I don't work on 36s very often. So, but I did know that this one. I mean, it's got a little drip in it. The one that he had, it looked similar shape, but it had like small holes. And there was like three of them. So I don't know what that was from. Maybe somebody can comment, tell me what that was from. Look at maybe type three or something else. I don't know. Hey guys, so anyway, it's funny when I think about all those things. It makes me think about the old days at the shop and the old past and stuff like that. And, you know, I just uh, start to remember more stuff. You know, I, back uh, when I was, I mean, this was in the, uh, from about 80, uh, late 80s, 86, 87, you know, I bounced around between different body shops and doing my own side work at home. And then I worked uh, as a mechanic was my regular job. I worked at the base exchange and Marsh Air Force Base. So I was a mechanic there. Then after 
lot of times I get home, I get down early. So, kind of had a crazy ex-wife, you know, back then, you know, my wife was, I don't know, not going to get into that, but if I came home at one o'clock in the afternoon, she would think that every day I should be home at one o'clock in the afternoon. So she'd be mad at me because I didn't come home. And then, uh, of course, divorced her later. But anyway, uh, so anyway, she, she, I would go to George's shop, and that's where you know I did the VW stuff. But I, you know, it was any VW that came in our shop at the base, of course, I had to work on, which was good and bad, you know, I had to, to work on them, so, sometimes I didn't want to, because they were always a pain, you know, it was just, it's such specific stuff to know and work on these cars that it's really kind of hard to uh, explain that, but, anyway, uh, Especially when it's a customer's car, it was always a little more special than it was your own. Let's go get my hose for that. Bring you guys back in in a second. Just gonna run and get the hose. So, like back in the day, when I was a regular mechanic, I'd, I'd pull in a, like a couple of General Motors cars. I remember doing this a few times, and this was, you know, when it come in. Like for shocks and struts would be about the same amount of time as brakes. I did both. And one car came in for brake, four wheel brake job, with two of them at once. And they came in, you know, like in the morning and whatever. And uh, I'll fix that later. It's making me a little bit pee. So anyway, I, I bring in two cars for four wheel brakes. Both, the, you know, similar, whatever they're called, X body, General Motors, whatever. And, uh, and I, I would do both cars at the same time and doing four wheel brakes on both cars in an hour and a half, two cars, 45 minutes a car, front and rear, both brakes done, drive it, test drive it, all done, hour and a half. So I was no sloucher, okay? I was pretty fast, but I wasn't, you know, I mean, I was fast. But then, at the VW shop, there was Todd. Me and George were just talking about this yesterday. Thought I'd bring you guys in on it. And hopefully Todd won't be offended or mad. Because he was amazing. <laughs> Todd would run circles around me. I mean, I was, fat. I was no sloucher, I'm telling you, I was not slow. But man, I always felt inferior when I was around him because he was so much faster than me. He worked in the VW shop and he would pull an engine out. Not a, not a 36 horse because these things are a pain in the neck. All this little tin. He'd be getting mad at it because he'd be just like frustrated with it because he, I hate these things. These 36 are such a pain because it'd be so much slower than a 1600. And he would pull the engine out, rebuild it, put it back in the car, start at whatever, 7 o'clock in the morning. And he'd do the whole thing by himself, pretty much. Other than a couple of things, there was like this guy, Bud, who worked there. And he would, um, he was like an older guy, really cool dude, he was. Missed him when he died, you know, he was old and passed away a long time ago. And, you know, we, we all missed him when he passed away and uh, he he was he would do things like assembly the rods or something like that you know do a couple little things stack the, the tools out you know and all that and can get all the new parts out and get everything all ready and Todd did all the work and he would just run circles around me I mean just everything I did he did it twice as fast and more thorough everything and it was just like he just look at stuff and he just know what was wrong right away he just he you know kind of like gives it all the other way or whatever and he just turn around boom boom and just knock it out and you just be like wow how did he know that you know and just he just would blow me away the guy was so fast 
Like I said, me and George were both talking about the Esther. We, we'd never met anybody like him. He just was, he was 18 years old when I first met him. And he was the fastest, the best mechanic, the more thorough than anybody I ever knew. And he just loved Volkswagen. He was just really would just, just eat these things alive. He'd just be at them so fast, you wouldn't even know. So yeah, he was an amazing mechanic there. And uh, never, never met anybody like him. Never seen anybody as fast. We still, I mean, I, I, I haven't talked to him in a long time, but you know, he's around somewhere. But he definitely would not do YouTube. <laughs> he wouldn't want to be on here. He's like pretty, I don't know, introverted, I want to say. It was hard to get to know, you know, all those guys. That, but as far as, man, as far as the mechanic goes, he was just, there was nobody like him. So he just like, thorough. He'd find problems with anything. Like, you know, you'd be looking at it for an hour and he'd walk up and within three minutes, he's already fixed it. It's on its way out the door. You know, he's just like, he was just like, like you said, he would make you feel like you were just just terrible because and he didn't do it on purpose or anything. He's a really nice guy, you know. We used to hang out a lot, you know, when we were younger and stuff. And it was with him. He took my anything. He took any kind of car apart. It didn't matter. He took my Corvair transmission over to his house and took it apart. And he goes, "Oh, these are pretty neat." So I was taking it all apart. Goes through the whole thing. Oh, this little valve here does this, 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 and he just have it all through his head. You know exactly what's going on. Oh, rebuilt it, put it back together, put it in the car, worked perfect. You could have never done it before. And you, I remember he did an automatic Volkswagen once, tore it apart, the late model front wheel drive. He tore it all apart, figured out everything with it, fixed it, put it back in. It was just amazing. That was just really gifted at fixing cars. It was just amazing. But yeah, you know, we took those thermostats and took sent, sent a bunch of them to Canada. I don't know. So I bought a bunch of them. Forgot about that. Man. I don't know why they didn't open. I, you know, I didn't take them apart or anything because we didn't care. We didn't, you know, there was no need for it. And still, I still totally don't think there's any need for thermostats. And not in California. And most of the guys driving around places in the summer only. You know, you're not driving these things in the winter anymore, I hope. You know, you shouldn't drive them in the snow. It's not good for the body so yeah we uh, had some good times over there I used to go there I go to work and then after I'd work a whole day or I'd be done you know most of the time I was done a little early because I was a little too fast and I'd knock out all my work you kind of I was just I was kind of like a real pain in the butt to my co-workers and stuff because I don't know, I just didn't tolerate being slow. You know, I just, just, that was all about speed to me back then and doing a good job too at the same time. Now, it's, I don't even care. I'm just trying to get it done. Right, whatever. And uh, I, I wouldn't want to be a mechanic again. No way. We got paid nothing, you know. Mechanics made nothing. And it, it was a hard job. And even that's what Todd got out of it too. He got into doing something else. And, you know, he, but he was amazing. He was far VWs go. God, he just blew me away. He just, he'd go through this whole engine. He'd find stuff that had a crack in the case. He'd find it before anybody. He'd see it. He'd just open it up. He goes, oh, there's where the problem was. Right here. Two seconds. He found it. God, what, how'd you find it? I don't know. It's right there. <laughs> you hear me ask me, look, me and George look at each other like, God, how do you find that so quick? You know, 
You just did. So uh, he was an amazing guy. Amazing mechanic. And got, like I said, he got out of it. Hey, boy. So look at this. Original muffler clamp on the right here. And the aftermarket ones. These like bend really easy. These things are just like, even though they're rusty, they're like formed correctly. That one, these get flattened out real easy. These ones just like, they don't bend. Cool. Bet you'll never guess how I got that off the stand. I just put those tires over here, kind of aimed it. Started tipping this thing over and then just let it fall on the tires. Caught the weight of the engine. I'm just going to put it on the jack. Leave it like that till I get on the jack. It got the whole engine on it, but I've slid it over. Now I'm just going to put the jack underneath. Yeah, it's ready to go back in the car. Cool. Well, you almost always need to get the choke cable through. It's always a pain on these. A camera overheated doing that. It's so hot right here in the sun. So I just need to go to the right a little. Oh, is that about lined up? And just push it in, looks like to me. Let's see. To get the bolts in the hole. Look, this side's in. Let's see if the other one's in. Nope. It's got to go down just a little bit. There she goes. Man, it is. You guys could touch this metal on this thing. This thing is so hot. It's unbelievable. This time of year with that sun comes right at this angle. It is hotter than even in the summer. Believe it or not. Working in the sun. Oh, there it is. Just felt it go in. Okay. Let's go hook up the wires. Fill it with oil. A little something I do. When I haven't put oil in it yet, I take the oil cap off. Well, I don't forget. Don't want to do that one. Okay. Of course, this one went right in. The uh, oval window. Nah, the first time it did. The second time it went in just like that. First time. Nope. It was not going in the hole. So anyway, we'll get her in there and bring you back in. I got to rearrange some wires, looks like to me. No, they don't look right. I'll get those better. Anyway, okay. right, let's see if we can get this thing to start without the camera overheating.
Yeah, I didn't forget to put oil in it. Sounds a lot better. Well, I don't know if you guys got to hear it start because the hammer keeps overheating. The sun is extremely hot. But boy, what a difference. This thing just, this is that on idle. And it ran good before. It just sounds a little bit better now. I gotta adjust this choke linkage or something. It's, let's see. Should actually open. Oh, it does. It goes, doesn't shut all the way. I always got to readjust that stuff. We'll try it out, I guess. That sounds good. Oh, I have to drive it now. Whoa. Oops. Got a little sideways there. Nice. Oh, I'll clean that up and then we'll come back in. All right, so honestly, I, I this thing never really ran bad. But it, it just runs a little bit better. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's just smoother, I think. Just like a little bit... Like it just feels like it's breathing a little bit better, you know. So I, I don't know. It doesn't. I don't know if it has any more power or not. I don't, I don't know if it does. Look at the dog over there. Let's see that out. Maybe it sees people's over here. Yeah, it's definitely got a little more juice. goes uphill a lot better. That'll be nice. It's still slow as molasses, of course. But it just, I don't know, it just sounds a little smoother. If I can even... Eh, it goes uphill slow. Definitely got more power than it did, but uh, I'm not gonna say it's. I mean, you're not gonna make a huge difference on a 36 horse, right? But anyway, I think it's uh, much better than it was. It's just, I don't know, it just feels like a little bit smoother, is what I want to say. It didn't feel rough before at all. Feels like it's breathing a little bit better because remember that it has three angle valve cut now it didn't have that before and that helps give you a little more performance 
Plus, I did a little bit of port work and the valves were worn, so they probably weren't sealing very good. Anyway, it seems pretty good. All right, I think that's it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, at least I'm back driving the old green bug. I'm happy with it. I just like driving this car. It's really fun to drive, just being all original and stuff. Original paint dash and all that. It's just really kind of a fun car to drive. And just original engine, transmission with the whiny first. You know, it just takes you back in time a bit. All right, wait till it stops, then put it first. I just let the clutch out kind of fast because it's, it's got a little chatter issue. It's not the um, it's not the the Bowden tube. It's that's perfect. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe the clutch plate. Maybe the clutch plate is a little bit eh, cricky cricky. It's all right. It's just fine the way it is. Race 36. <laughs> it's fun. Alright, I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Please like, share, and subscribe.